three, two. Welcome back to the Echo Cast. I am here with Dylan No Delts O'Brien and Michael. I don't know what to call Higher him. Higher wellness. Higher wellness smoke. You'll get it one day, Joel. It's okay. One, one day. One day. But I hope you enjoyed the last episode. If you haven't seen it already, I'm sure there will be a link for you guys to watch it. Um, but we're going to kick it back to Michael because he's so good at this. He's been uh, leading us through a bunch of questions that we can answer for you, stuff that we don't know what's coming. So everything you hear is uh, organic. organic. <laughs> yeah, making sure to keep it keep it uh, fresh for you guys. And Michael's great at that. So well, thank go you, ahead, man. Michael. Where sure. are we going to start this one? We're going to pick up where we left off. We left it with a little bit of a cliffhanger in the episode of, I think you guys hear them specifically speak so much on information and tips and knowledge practical tips on how to get fitter, get healthier. But I'm always curious about people like this that are successful in this long term around their mindsets on things, how they view things, what are their perspectives like? And that's what I want to challenge them with today is their perspectives on the last question I asked, which is if you were talking to a beginner, someone fairly new to the game as an expert or a teacher, which they are, how would you help someone get started, establish the habits, the routines, the practices and the mentalities to be permanently fit for forever because that's where people struggle a lot of people who lose weight can't keep it off so i want to hear put you guys put on your coaching hats a little bit of we'll start with joel how would you instruct you know the average guy or gal who wants to come to you and say hey joel i need help getting fit and i've never never been able to do it uh it would all depend on where the person's starting from so are we assuming that this person is overweight or are we assuming this person is like a teenager mm. or like a teenager who's just i guess you could say skinny without too much muscle like which which category would you like to address yeah let's go with i'll go with down the middle in terms of demographics so let's say someone between the ages of, of 25 and 32 someone closer to our age who doesn't have a lot of experience with dieting training maybe they've tried to lose weight in the past but for all intents and purposes we would consider them I feel a like we could simplify it though in a way that it would apply to a lot of people i, I, That's true. I always preach in a way that the simpler the objective is, the easier you can attack it. Yeah. By no means am I saying fitness is easy, but if you make it very consumable or digestible, the simpler it is. So like with fat loss, you just want to simplify it as the simpler you could do, like know your macros, know your calories, and then you can go from bulk cut. Let's call it overweight adult. Okay. Okay. Overweight adult. So the first thing I do is I try to get them to a realistic perspective on where they are. And that's where most people struggle because they actually have no idea what they do. Like they have no clue. If you are to ask them like, okay, well, what do you typically eat in a day? Like even like, it's, it's honestly amazing. Like they don't know. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, kind of like whatever's around. Like they don't, they don't actually have a set plan. They don't actually have any mode of action. All they're doing is just floating through life. And that never works in any other area. So why do you expect it to work for your fitness? And then it's like, oh, well, I know I just need to eat less. It's like, you can't do that. And the reason for that is honestly, it's biological. And that's what people don't realize is they think there's something wrong with them, but they don't realize it's just hardwired into our brain. So especially people who tend to struggle with obesity, they need to understand first and foremost that the reason that they're having trouble losing weight is not because there's some flaw with them. Like, cause there's a lot of people that have tried over and over again, they don't know what's going on. And it's like, well, if you don't have anything that's actually um, that's actually going to help the long term, anybody can lose a bit of weight over a short period of time. And what they need to understand is the mechanisms that are causing them to go back. And that's what they don't understand. Cause they're like, well, I, I did it and it worked. And like, it worked, it worked, it didn't. Like just because something helps in the short term for what you see as your goal doesn't mean it worked. Yeah, people bounce up and down nonstop. Yeah, and the reason for that mainly is, like I said, biological, it's biochemical. And so what happens is these people, they're just like, they think it's a flaw in their mentality when really it's a flaw in understanding how their overall system works and why they keep going back. Well, I think a lot of fitness coaches even have that issue where they apply what works for them to everyone. It's awful. It's my it's my least favorite thing about the fitness industry. That's why the fitness industry gets such a bad rap because coaches like that have such a big grasp on people because misinformation goes farther out than good information, in my yeah. opinion. And they usually look amazing because they're on excessive gear and that causes them to spread this misinformation to a wide audience. And they think since they do it and it works for them, it has to work for you, which is just not an approach a coach should have. You should be a very adaptable coach to yeah. every single issue. 
I talked to, uh, I remember it was, I think it was a couple of years back, I talked to a bunch of coaches, um, TikTok coaches, and uh, I'm not gonna name any names <laughs> because I, like, I don't wanna, I don't yeah. wanna out anybody, but um, it was very obvious when we talked that they did not understand people at all. Um, they were just simply doing what they did, like for like a bodybuilding prep. And they just give those people the same information that they use when they're on a bodybuilding prep. And that was their method of getting these people who are average everyday people to lose weight. It's crazy they do that because bodybuilders always rebound the most success of exactly. any other sport. Like bodybuilding is essentially, when it, gets, when it comes down to it, a lot of times, and it depends on who, who it is, but for the most part, it's professional yo-yo dieting. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, so you're telling these people to lose weight in the same manner that you use to prep into a show where your whole goal is to get as lean as possible and then your weight goes right back up after. So if you give them the same methods that you're using in order to prep for a bodybuilding show, what are the chances that they're not also going to rebound after? So they just have a higher starting point. It sounds it's, like you guys are, it sounds like what you do with your clients, you alluded to it when you added commentary, is you really focusing on meeting them where they're at, Yes. and then making them aware of where they're also at. Yeah. Because like you said, I love what you said that most people are just floating. I said something in a video like that, I called people asleep at the wheel of their own life. And that may be a harsh way to put it, but it's true, most people have no cognitive awareness around how what they're eating makes them feel, perform, and ultimately weigh and look. There's a great psychological concept around awareness, and I think you pointed to something great in your coaching, which is you like to raise people's awareness of you have unconscious incompetence where you don't know what you don't know. You have conscious incompetence. You're now aware that there's a lot of shit you don't know. And then you get to conscious competence where you're working towards the calories and the protein and you're actively aware you have goals and you're working towards them. And then you get to where I would say the three of us can be, which is a sort of unconscious competence where you're in a flow state with fitness. And that's kind of the cycle of learning any new skill. And it sounds like you really emphasize on, I wanna meet you where you're at as a coach, but I also need you to be keenly aware and honest with yourself that you don't know anything. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah you nailed it. Nailed well, it. Every, every single time I start with a client, um, there's not been a single time where I've started with a client unless there's some sort of time constraint and they are a bodybuilder and they need to get ready for something really fast. Sure. There's never been a time where I have not taken and set aside about three to seven days where I just have them send me different things that they're doing. I'm glad you pointed that out. I, I, I just I just observe. Super important. I, I don't I don't way. actually I don't actually coach for you the first. You tell them to live their life and send you the reports. That's yeah. what I do with all my and I, I have specific things that I have them send me send me reports on, and it'll be things and like one of and one of the things that it actually took me a while to include because I always knew it was a good idea, and I was doing it through my coaching, and just recently I shouldn't say just recently because obviously I've been coaching for a little while now, but one of the things that I was missing in that observation, because I would always have them send me the food that they're eating, pictures of it, because nobody actually, like <laughs> if, they, if they don't take a picture of it, some they, they miss it. Yeah. Um, and then I would have them shoot me their weigh-ins every single day to see if it was actually the way that they normally live. Because that's what I found out, was when they found out they were getting observed, they would automatically curb a lot of their habits and you'd be able to see it on the scale because they'd ask. start losing weight rapidly. Do you make them buy food scales or measuring cups? I don't make them, but I heavily suggest they try. They I do I make it. them. I don't accept them unless they do it because I make them eat the normal food, but I make them weigh it so they actually can see how much they're actually physically eating. That's why I have the pictures. Because I'm not as good as an eyeball tracker. As yeah, you know. so like I, I got, I got super good at it, or to the point where like if somebody sends me a picture of their meal, as long as there's some sort of frame of reference, I can tell them within like a hundred calories what it mm -hmm. is. Well, like absolutely, you every series. every single time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was one of the things that kind of put me on the map. Yeah, because I'm just obsessive with understanding calories and food and quantities. I think my OCD just doesn't allow me to eyeball track that, and I don't. I wouldn't trust myself to the point that you do with the eyeball tracking, where I make them actually do a scale. I don't need to measuring cups to the extent because measuring cups still have flaws. Mm -hmm. So I want them to be able to grasp what eight ounces of chicken looks like, right? Rather than because people surprisingly underestimate protein and or overestimate protein, drastically underestimate carbs. Everything else, yeah, yeah. I would I would agree with, with that. With the chicken, almost every single time they'd be marking eight ounces of chicken, and it's around three to six every single time. And then they'd have rice, and they'd weigh it, 
and they're like, oh wow, I've been eating a lot more rice than I thought I was eating this whole time. Well, that's that's a, a nice segue into assignment of goals, tasks, and habits with your clients. So Dylan, when you've, you've established that baseline of knowledge, we're there, right? Three to seven days, how are you living your life now? We know something's a little bit mucked up, we're gonna try to fix that. What are you assigning? Are you giving calories? Are you giving macros? Are you telling them to weigh? So I, I teach them how to properly find their macros and teach them how to properly find their calories. And I, I start with like physical health rather than fitness as a whole. Mm -hmm. I want them to have a routine. I set morning routine. I get them to have 10,000 steps a day just for heart health. It stimulates appetite. If you can't eat, it also helps you just have a good baseline of calories you burn throughout the whole day. So I'm not guessing. So if you don't have a expenditure throughout the day, you've been eating 2,000 calories every single day and your expenditure is differently. You're gonna have a lot of Variation. Yeah. So I establish ten day or ten thousand steps a day or more up to you. I just like to have a baseline and then I go from there. I okay. also like to see their split and I ask, Do you want me to change your split? Do you want me to have a split that I want to assign you? Or do you just want to run with your split and I'll just give you tips throughout the process? Okay. So that's where my adaptability is because I'm very confident in prescribing weightlifting. I think that's the easy part. I and agree. Dieting's the pretty hard part for some people to grasp and teach. So that's what I mainly focus on. Like he was saying earlier, he gave only nutrition advice when he first started, which I think is the thing that people most likely should. But people, I mean, think about it. People's psychology is messed up in the gym. New Year's resolutioners go to the gym first rather than go on diet. You can work out for an eternity and not lose a single pound. I agree. So. I agree. We take, we take a little bit of a phased approach in our coaching, which is raising awareness around food choices and habits because the the behaviors create the end goal, which is the caloric deficit, which is the fat loss. So for the first four weeks, I put most of the guys and gals on a protein goal. And you don't want to, if you don't want to track it in an app, fine. Palm size portion somewhere between 30 and 40 Gs. You make them see it though beforehand, like what, how much your protein throughout the whole day would be for them. What do you mean? Like in portions of food? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll show in our onboarding video, we talk through like, here's literally what a portion of protein may look like. I prefer you weigh and track, but Let's start with, you have a protein goal of 170 grams, you're 170 pounds, let's go with that. Here's the master food list, red meat, uh, red meat, poultry, fish, vegetables, fruits. Here's how you grocery haul, here's an example of what we go get. And we try to get them to, because a lot of these people just have shitty eating habits. Mm -hmm. So trying to get them to change it all at once can create a little bit of analysis paralysis and saying, instead of pivoting your whole life 180 and taking away a bunch of shit, let's see what we can add. Let's add protein here. Because if we add protein here, you're maybe not gonna have that shitty snack at 2.30 in the afternoon you were having because you're satiated. And then, once we can see 100% adherence and compliance rate of hitting protein goal, eating 90 to 95% of their foods off our master food list, the byproduct tends to be a caloric deficit. Yeah, not coach, all the time. We coach very similar. Yeah, not all the time, but do it's you, hard to overeat. Do you do 80, 20 or 90, 10 whole foods? I like 90, 10 to get started. Uh, personally, I feel better. They feel better. Everyone loses five to seven pounds, dropping water and a little bit of fat the first month. And then when we hit the 30 day point, if they're not happy or they want to dial in more, we add the layer of complexity with tracking and weighing. Because that really is the most surefire way to guarantee, which is what I'm going to segue into the question for Joel. What does your approach look like when you are delivering or implementing your habits and your coaching into the clients? I wanted to find what 80-20 was, I meant. Yes. Yeah, sorry, 80-20 is 80% whole foods, 20% not, 90% whole foods, 10% not. Just implementing that will make you inherently lose weight and accomplish your goals faster. Just wanted to find that real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, so what was the question again? Question was, when we get to the point of you've established the baseline with your client, you know their current habits and we know what we need to change now, what does your actual implementation look like into their life? What are you changing? What are you adding? What are you having them do? See, that's, it's funny that you, that you ask it in that way because it's not the same depending on who it is. Dude, so yeah. all my coaching is extremely adaptable. Well, let's talk, let's talk through your philosophy then right. rather than the so habits. The first thing that I do is I establish with them what their actual goals are uh -huh. and both short term and long term, because sometimes I have people who like they're, they're legitimately in it for the long haul. They are like, you know what, two to three years, as long as I get there, I don't really care. And so I, what I'll do is I'll be like, okay, so we can either, we can do like a couple different approaches and it based on whether their goal is primarily muscle building or their goal is primarily fat loss, it's gonna look a little bit different. Some people are 400 pounds and their goal is to be 350. Some people are 400 pounds and they wanna step on a bodybuilding stage. And so I talk through with them realistically what that's going to look like, time frames, if they do things properly, but I also give them the other side. Do you do that in the consultation or after? After they've, after they're already signed up. Okay. Yeah, no, like I don't, so that was something that I kind of stopped doing. Um, 
because I used to try and do like consultations before everything and I'm like it just ended up most of the time it would be a waste of time um, because okay. the people were not really if they if they got onto a consultation uh, for coaching it was like they were already so hesitant to begin with that it was it just ended up being a waste of both of our mm -hmm. times you help me out with that yeah I think it sounds like the parallel we all and this is why I love what we do like I love this industry is we all have different ways of doing things to arrive at the same destination, which yeah. is results and defining what results look like yeah. for that, that person. Was, that was one of the things that I wanted to, that I actually wanted to mention when I was listening to you talk about your methods, you talk about your methods. It's like, even if we do things slightly differently, it doesn't necessarily mean that one person is wrong. Now, obviously we'll have differences of opinion on various factors, but sure. in the end, our goals for the people and what we're doing for them is hopefully going to arrive at a good destination for the person that we're working with, and that is the primary goal. The goal isn't, okay, who's most right here? The goal is, okay, can we actually get people to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish? Well, that's why there's so many coaches that work for different people. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of coaches who do it horribly. Do horribly, yes. I would say there's more that do it horribly and more people that have been burned in the same way that in my in my corporate gig there was a stigma around salespeople, mm. there's a stigma around online coaches. Oh, is that right. most of the people that I speak to have been burned by the thirty nine ninety nine a month cookie cutter program, brutal meal plan, never heard from the actual coach at all, and so we're fighting against that stigma every day. But it sounds like we all try to change their habits at a fundamental level. Yeah, I actually want to speak on. I had a I had a kid that hormonally was. He got so messed up at 17 years old where he got his testosterone tested. He was at 210 points per deciliter. Oh, my and goodness. I was asking his calories. His calories were like 1,500 calories, which was pretty low, but he was a smaller guy, like a buck 20. So I was like, all right, not insanely, insanely bad, but his fats were at 10. And I was like, why are your fats at 10? And he said, my coach said fats are nine grams or per gram is nine calories, so avoid those. And I was like, you're mentally insane. That coach is- People are out here coach. making dangerous recommendations. Yes. There is some, okay. Let me, let me read you a text that I actually got from a client this morning. Now this client, when he came to me, uh, and I hope he's okay with me talking about this, I'm obviously not gonna name drop, mm -hmm. um, but he, uh, he was just really down, like mentally. And what we're in a fat loss phase with him right now, uh, he's significantly over fat, um, but, he, uh, he had a previous coach who got him into a bulking phase, right? And he should never have been bulking. He was already like at a state that didn't make sense to bulk. Sure. And he, they bulked him hard. They, they bulked him for a long time. With the whole, the coach basically made him feel like, okay, if you do this, like, and then you cut back down. He, he thought he was going to be legitimately like, like ripped in the 200s sort of thing like that was very that was interesting kind of, yeah and it's like and so whoever his coach was i'm assuming had some sort of like pd involvement or something like not with him but like in general so the idea of being over 200 pounds ripped is like obviously plausible yeah very skewed though with um me. but he but he texted me and he said he said like i feel like i'm being held back right now by a lot and i'm like what do you mean like what, what's being held back and he said to me I think it's time I've wasted with my old coach. In my head, I should have lost this weight by June, July. Would have started a bulk by now from September to March. I feel like I'm losing out on muscle building, but I know I'm not happy at all with my body and, have, uh, and haven't been since I was last 200 two years ago. So I have it weighing me down motivationally. Um, to be clear, this isn't a you problem at all. You've been fantastic. And like he's, he's stuck in this mental state of turmoil because of the coach that he had previously and because of how much they messed him over. So not only did he not make progress with his old coach, it actually set him back mentally because he assumed that hiring this coach was going to get him to where he wanted to be. And like, there's people like, I don't think I've, I have not had a single person who's walked away from my coaching being in a worse state than when they got to me. Yeah. Ever. I yeah. Say and I it's like, and I, and when I get people like this, I just like, I understand why people are hesitant with a lot of things. Um, and I understand why people are skeptical and people have gone after me like, oh, well, it's not like you can provide something that other people can't provide. I'm like, I'm not saying that there's a, I'm not saying that I'm the only person that can, like there's a lot of good coaches out there, but there is a whole lot more doing damage than there are actually right. helping. That's one of the realizations I had to have in this industry was that we're effectively in doing what we do we're effectively fighting an uphill battle that we're, we're never gonna win. Because for every one person we change for the better, there's a thousand that have been burned that are negative, that project 
their losses internally and the things they can't do onto us through negative comments like we talked about in the last episode there are a thousand bad coaches for every one of people like you two and i think the sooner you can accept the mentality that if i just help one every day that makes this all worth it things get a little easier but i hope if anyone out there listening has struggled with working with someone online and wants to reach out to someone like joel or dylan or myself to work with us but you have that barrier Understand that we have a clear mission, no matter how we do it, it's the same. It's to leave each person better than we found them when it comes to their perspectives and habits on fitness and teaching them how to do this for forever. Because that's ultimately the goal. This is a new lifestyle when you inherit it and you inhabit it. Yes, make them consciously, unconsciously competent of their habits. So, um, man, I really appreciate you guys sharing your insight on coaching. It's always fun to, to talk about people who do the same thing in very different ways. I sincerely hope that you all got value out of this. Um, anything you guys want to add or mention before we depart for this episode? I feel like we can just talk for so long. I yeah. know. I wish we had the Rogan time frame and yeah. we could just do this for Somebody four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're on a time constraint. These guys are busy. They got lots of things to do. Uh, but man, thank you all for, for letting me interview you a little bit and pick your brains. It's an absolute you privilege. feel like the host today. <laughs> uh, we got we got to do this again at some yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, I hope to come out here again soon. And obviously, you come out here as well. You're local, so it's easy to get you in a podcast studio for a couple hours. Sure. But uh, look for more episodes of the three of us. Let us know if you like this. Drop a comment. Follow us. Listen and subscribe. We sincerely appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you the next time we are all three yeah. together. See you guys.